What's up everyone, how are you? So today is a lot of footage. It's quite a bit. And if you're a first time viewer, it might tweak your mind a little bit. I want to apologize in advance, but if you've been following the series, hopefully you can catch on to what and why I've been doing this. You probably won't catch on to most of it if you're a long time viewer. If it's not enough for you, I have a lot more extra raw, uncut, step-by-step -step footage of it all on Patreon. It's uh, exclusive videos never released to the YouTube public all on this build. If you want that, it's accessible from the $6 tier up. So just check out this link if that's something you're interested in. Moving on, my what I want to accomplish with this, why you see this and everywhere, I want to make an unsinkable John boat with no open voids. There's like $400 worth of foam in here and pour foam alone, not including the polystyrene wall sheeting that we'll be putting in in other separate sections. This is all my Gen 5 zero framing, version three, the whole frame. It's all Gen 5, no hybrid framing, no outdated stuff. This is what I want to do in my last Killer Life build. This will be the last John boat, aside from the Yak Killer, that I will ever do. And so I want to leave my mark. I want to go all out and give you guys what I think is really capable in here to put the best John boat that I will ever put out right here. We do a lot in this video. We almost do pretty much the entire framing process. We leave you off with a few updates for the very, very back about the live wall and the transom and the fish finder. All those videos are also coming up here in the series, but we're gonna try and really just compact a lot of it here. So stay tuned, grab some popcorn, and get ready. People have long asked me how you do the side rails. Well, I'm gonna give you a super up close and personal view of exactly how I do them. And if you can't get it after this, then I don't know what to tell you. You also don't need this bandsaw, even though it's super badass. All you need is a pair of serious tin snips and you can groove it just like this, but you have to groove each individual section however you need and you need to cut them closer. If you're going to try and bend to the taper, you can space them out farther if it's just farther away. I cut and slot them so I can bend them with my fingers. This is 1 16th inch aluminum. If you go to 1 8th, it's impossible to bend them with your fingers and you have to find some very odd way to flex them down and that actually is very bad for the bunny against your hole once you rivet it to the top. For those of you who are wondering when that you're gonna get leaks to the rivets, these side rails are done completely above the water line. Well above the water line, and water's not ever gonna force itself through that rivet. I know they're not completely waterproof, but water's not gonna just like upright come out of the lake and you know compromise the lake. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. So you can be fine with just open and pop rivets here. That's all we're using. It's a series of independent brackets, more or less, running along the entire side of the boat. And so some of these spots you'll be using to attach, you know, beams from one side of the boat to the other, but the rest of it just acts as a nice place to mount your side uh, decking on. And uh, here we are just running it. So we're running it pretty straight for the first three fourths, or I'm sorry, the last three quarters of the boat. For the first quarter of the boat that tapers up, you'll see it bevel slightly up. That's the boat always tapers up that way. So but we still keep the rail straight. So the whole thing sits straight despite the taper. I refined a version three of my generation five framing to accommodate all the bleed throughs that we're gonna have running through the foam. It's the lightest, most advanced framing system that I have ever made. But the bigger catch to it is that it's all able to be done at a DIY level. It's an all riveted frame. It doesn't require any serious advanced tools, just things you can buy at a standard hardware store. You can get it done. We're using Marine Flex Conduit that I got from West Marine. I also found a big giant bundle of it on Amazon and I stuck it in my store if you need it. This is only part of the bleed off and conduit process. We're all gonna have to have it run out the bottom of the mainframe. So we're actively attaching it to all corners of all Gen 5 dry hatches and we're running it through the very, very bottom section.
With the Gen 5 framing, there's no true core anymore, like there were in the other previous generations. There's just a series of puzzles that fit into a piece, however you want to assemble it. With the amount of dry hatch spots, there's four individual drain ports in each hatch. There's no way I'm going to be able to run all those tubes seamlessly throughout the bottom without running into problems and weakening the frame. So I'm going to make a bleed off manifold for a bunch of tubes to connect together to bleed out. There's going to be no pressure running through this, but only a series of tubes laid out to catch whatever's coming in. I ended up reinforcing the joints with marine epoxy after I brazed them just for security because once we put this thing in there and we foam around it, it's stuck in there. With that out of the way, we can start making conduit spaces for all the rod tubes. And in conjunction, we're going to make a bunch of extra conduits for the wiring itself. I've only done that on one other boat, and I loved it when I had to actually go back and refabricate some things. The conduits were immensely helpful in either rewiring or adding new things. And then I haven't done it in a boat build since, and I've regretted it. So I'm going to do it here in everywhere. And again, for everyone who ever asks me whether or not they should gut the bench seats, my answer is no. Turn them either into ribs or into something else useful. It's time to make the interface for the rod tubes. That's the last section that we do before I actually start to insert the tubes. So I kind of had to mark it with a square ruler. That's all black garden hose. I saw that in the LUN that the previous boat builders who fabricated the initial build ran it through as conduits, but this specific application, I'm running it through each corner of the section where I'm gonna pour foam as water bleed offs. So because this is not a sealed application, we're gonna to have to be running bleed offs throughout the foam, that way it lasts. Other than that, I can't 
find a way to outmaneuver the water and that will eventually compromise the foam if the water just sits there. So we're gonna do everything we can in our power to fix that. People ask me often how you make 1 16th inch aluminum strong to the frame. And uh, the answer is the joints, as long as you're running this aluminum in a one foot span and you're running joints between each foot, it's actually not so bad. I know if you grab it and you hold it initially, you can actually twist and flex the aluminum, but it all matters right at the joint. That's why we're adding these extra pieces of aluminum cut adjacently so there can be no bend or sag there at the corner because there will eventually be if we don't do something about it and right here at the foot pedal where we're going to be placing a lot of our actual weight we definitely don't want this to sag over time not to mention that all the totes and all the foam reaching under the frame give it substantially more strength by itself we have conduits running through the system we have to add one more conduit over here running for the actual uh, six gauge wire to the trolling motor. This is gonna be a trolling motor bay. Once we stick pour foam in these spots, it will stiffen up that bay substantially and then we're gonna do something about these grooves. So it only channels right into the drain port there. We put in your recess pedal mount that we mounted into here. It's all set and ready to pour. Once we pour, this will stiffen up substantially and we'll be able to cut it flat before we add the final piece to it. All these tubes, all these conduits are ready to go. And then we got this, the, you know, the, the, the gardening hose, that kind of hose over there. We got that stuff and ran it at an evil level all the way out, all the way out to right there. And that's a vent port. But we do have areas for if the water seeps in any way that it's going to get caught. <laughs> We're gonna end up running compartment lights for each deal. These are courtesy lights. You can buy real cheap at Walmart or you can buy them in bulk on my Amazon store. Link is in the description below along with this wire. Now I try to run duplex for everything but it's simply not gonna work in this application or we do need to run individual strands of wire. If you weren't able to catch what the wire was when I ran it through the initial battery box, that was six gauge marine grade wire duplex. Here we're running these like self soldering connectors i find them to be the best thing because they solder the wire together instead of a crimp and they also have adhesive little spots that blend it does everything and it's super flexible doesn't add any real extra bulk to the wire so if you're trying to run the wire through places like this the the butt connectors they don't get caught there's another way also that you can join wires or splice them i found the best way to keep them like watertight is to cut a little groove inside the coating itself and then wrap the wire around it, splice it through there. We're splicing the negative end right here, the black and the yellow. And then liquid tape. I swear, if you give a pretty thick coating of that stuff, it is the best stuff 
to coat your wires with. They'll never come apart and nothing will ever get in there and saturate it. We have to run the same type of gardening hose platform through this side of the boat through bleed offs, but because there's a lot of compartments and a lot more extra conduits because of those day boxes, we're gonna have to be a little crafty with how we do this. So it gets everywhere, it's still able to bleed off water and it's not gonna really jam up the bottom. So we're connecting them with little, I don't know, connectors I found at Lowe's. I don't know what they're called, but they work really well. So we're gonna start the foaming process. We got everything going. We have all the conduits ran. We have all the bleed off hoses ran. We have all the fittings ran back there. And so my son is here. He's gonna be in here because when we pour this around, it's gonna expand. And when it does expand, if it's gonna push against something that will flex, you need to have pressure there. So when it expands against the walls here and it kind of bloats them in, my son will be in there to kind of press against them and hold them to shape until the foam stops expanding. At that point in time, it'll stay to fit and then these walls will be very, very stiff. Same thing with down here. And by the time everything's done, you can stand in these totes like nothing. We're gonna end up running a big court. Remember last time when we did those and we had kept having to, we were using cups that size and it was going nowhere. And uh, the more stuff we have in there, the more expansion we got, the more heat that was generated. And we're right on the line between 65 and 70 degrees. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get that going, pour as much as we can in one vial. I think the most we can get out of here, this is 20, so close to 30 ounces. And this is right at a 64 ounce jug. So we'll get 56, fit between 50 and 60 ounces of fluid and we're just gonna dump it. I think an ETA of 80 would be what it was gonna take, in my estimate, to, to top of those big foam buckers, those big foam bunks in the back of the line. So. Or at least give her see what happens at 60 ounces of fluid this time. Stand in it. This is my son. This is what happens in the tote after it's reinforced with foam. Okay. Is there any flex? No. Nope. Jump in it. Okay. 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 That's it. Jump. Okay. Okay. How do they feel? All right. Pretty happy with the current mod so far. We do have the live well in. I have a full live well video coming. We have a remote here that we'll install once we put the panel on. We have all the wires around here through conduits. We have the bilges. We'll be doing a video on bilge pumps and why they are that way. We have the actual valve here with quick connect hoses. Everything here. It's all nice. Like the Flowrite system's quick connect system is insane. Like. You definitely have to check it all out. And we'll be getting on all that very soon from start to finish. We have these sections foamed off with lots of foam. That's like 80 ounces of foam right there oh. in here, which is quite a bit considering all it expands in there. Expanding in there, 
you can see it in there hardened up inside there which stiffened up this here with a tube running through to the channel so this can be used as a cooler or whatever you want really but it's got a port there a uh, flush port there we have a conduit ran with a wire to the transducer we have uh, a fish finder video coming up from start to finish of what I think is the best cost-effective fish finder out there the back's gonna be in there everything's there the the inlet systems there the valve systems there the overflow system is right there the gas tank we have just enough room for a six gallon gas tank and he's gonna put a brand new 15 horse Merc hopefully we'll be able to demo that we have the best pump we could possibly have I'll cover all this and we'll definitely get on on live videos working of it throughout the whole process we'll definitely have the DIY version of it processed here pretty soon we were running channels of wires we were pre-running wires if you watched how we were doing that so all that's going in all the compartments light up on a switch for big offsets so that later on if he wants to run a better fish finder which they generally have giant cables in the back there'll be a conduit that'll be able to actually run those with fish tape through our whole ventilation port system goes down in here there's the one there's the one those can all be blown through or sucked out or obviously as water collects into those spots it'll drain out all the dry all the bleed ports are uh, covered we covered it with a mesh deal here I'll cover that later I have that on film but that's uh, perforated metal that we covered the bleed ports too that's why that's so no bugs like crawl up in there or anything gets up in there and jams up the bleed port that would just be terrible it would make the whole system useless what happens in a lot of boat manufacturers they just don't seal it and water does get in and water does saturate it eventually if it just sits on there long enough and it will ruin it I did over pour to get the highest race possible and I did have to cut the foam and that did not do the best deal. I will have to, because when you cut this foam, you open the cells up. The closed cell version highly depends on you not compromising it once it's poured. So we're going to have to definitely re-preserve the foam and clog up these pour holes so nothing can get in them. So we'll have to do that no matter where else we over pour. We're going to pour a little bit more here just to level it out. And then we're going to probably paint the foam. Honestly, you can epoxy over it or you can paint it. We'll do those all. We just have to run a few more wires in here for like the rod lock LEDs and a few other things and then we just have to make the brain to tie it all in and then we gotta panel it. It's all it's all science here, it's just very stressful. This boat actually burnt me out. I ran into a few problems, especially with uh, redesigning the transom, which I will show you that in one of the upcoming videos. But how we re redesigned the transom from the initial one, it's uh, substantially different. <laughs> um, and it was a giant pain. I think the transom, the back burnt me out the worst. The back just setting up the back the way it is now. I don't know why it was harder for me, but it was. The front, I just, maybe because I had the front envision and I, I generally have a harder time envisioning the back. The back burnt me out, like my brain fried. I don't know what. It's significantly less complicated than the front though. So, stuff just happens, I don't know. I don't know why I do what I do, I'll be honest. But uh, I can tell you, this is definitely one kick-ass boat. This is what I wanted to do in my last Killer Life boat conversion that I do for anybody. I wanted to make definitely do my mark in a 1448 John boat. This might be the last John boat that I ever do personally. I want to move on to different things, um, more more expansive things. I want to definitely expand this channel um, and make it very diverse. And so I just want to leave, before I do that, I want to leave my mark with what somebody can do with a John boat. And this is definitely going to be it.